How you doing guys? In this video we're going to talk about the RJ35 implement and lift system and the parts that are associated with that. Um, it's pretty pretty simple overall just like most of the parts and systems on an RJ35. You have a lift handle, you have a lift cable, you have a pin or an implement pin that goes in. There's a pivot a T pivot which we'll take a look at in a second two frame mounts and then the actual hitch itself um, there are a couple variations of the hitches the early 55s or 1955s if you want to call it uh, the hitch was completely made out of band iron uh, 56 had um, a little bit of an open area in it this one happens to be a 57 which is all sheet metal style um, <clears throat> The other thing that you'll see is in the lift arms, 55s did not have the actual lift lock. It was just a solid piece of bar stock that went up in this area and this L bracket kind of system. So when you wanted to lift your implement, you had to actually hold it up um, because the weight of the implement would make the uh, arm go forward. Um, that also included a little bit of a lift lock thumb release so you know like I think it was mid 55 late 55 they came up with this system so you could pull it back it would lock into place if you needed to unlock it and drop your implement you'd push the button and the arm would go forward uh, one way to tell the difference between an RJ35 lift arm from an RJ58 or 59 the RJ35 had square corners on the, le on the lock lever compared to uh, a 58 and a 59 the corners are rounded off up in that area um, which also carried over into the Suburbans the 60 and the 61 um, <clears throat> specialty item for the uh, for the lift system is the cable the cable is actually a kind of a one-off piece for an RJ35 if you're missing this part it's going to be pretty hard to find one of these off a tractor. Um, I've bought tractors without them and it was difficult to to make one that kind of looked like the original. I was, I was lucky enough, a friend of mine actually gave this to me uh, for working on his tractor. Um, big kudos to him. Big, as they say, thumbs up. Because um, this is, this would have been a real pain in the neck to try to find one so that's that now when it comes to the actual implement hitch like I said there's a couple pieces um, we have two frame mounts these mount underneath the frame and they hang the pivot the pivot itself is pretty simple it's just a piece of uh, two pieces of three quarter inch bar stock excuse me I'm sorry about that three three quarter inch bar stock there's a washer welded there is a 5 16 hole threaded for a 5 16 bolt. That's what actually bolts the cable to it and creates the pivot um, of the rear of the rear hitch. Pretty simple standard wheel horse form at that time, you know, just simple pieces. These are pretty easy to remake. Um, I just happened to have this one. I actually ended up buying the whole rear hitch portion off of 57. My tractor is 56. This actually is a 57 hitch. Um, and I'll tell you why why this is a 57. Um, typically, I'll just remake this because these are usually really rotted up or they're frozen to the hitch. So you really have to beat the heck out of it to get it apart. But there's that. The hitch itself, this one happens to be a 57. We know this is a 57 by way of all sheet metal construction uh, obviously this is not sheet metal but this the actual implement slot is all sheet metal 55s and 56s were made out of band iron the, the 56 year was kind of a blend year some of them were all band iron some of them were uh, sheet metal but this is being sheet metal is definitely a 57 it has this t-bar which goes across so that way when you're when you turn this doesn't actually pivot on the on the T pivot this act this side touches the gear case the back of the gear case this side actually touches the very drive uh, band iron stand so this thing basically will stay in a 
straight position instead of swinging back and forth. The only part I don't have on the table um, is there's a small piece of band iron. It's, it, it bolts to the bottom of the, of the tractor and pinches the sheath. And what it does is it pinches it against the frame so the lift cable will slide through the sheath and the cable itself won't ride on the bottom of the frame. Uh, 55s, 1955s, did not have this. So a lot of the cables would snap right where they rubbed the frame. Uh, you'll see they, they just, you know, wore through. Um, other places that you'll see some problems is right here where it bolts to the top of the top of the pivot that goes up here because there's a lot of like bending pressure right there like this thing torques and twists back and forth as you lift and lower an implement sometimes it'll snap off there uh, but and then this end bolts to the bottom of the lift arm itself basically it, there's a hole right here a bolt goes through on the back side underneath the frame is where the cable actually bolts in. Once we start installing all these parts, um, we'll get a better look of it. But essentially I wanted to just give you a kind of like a pseudo exploded view of what an RJ35 implement, implement lift system consists of. It's pretty simple. We got a couple brackets, we got a lift arm, a T-pivot, the actual slot hitch, um, the implement lock pin, I guess you call it, and the actual lift cable. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.